carried. <coughs> Next item is the property tax development incentive grant. Councillor Amter. I make a motion that Council approves the tax grant applied for under the property tax development incentive policy rule 350600 grant amount $602.64. Is there any comments on this? Councillor Janaka? Uh, um, I have, uh, Daryl is, is one of the people that continue to, to build in this town, uh, amongst many others. Again, I'm just going back to uh, a couple of council meetings ago, we were chastised by Mr. Waco Sharkawi Holmberg. You have policies, follow your policies. One of the things that John Giroud cited many many times in his report was you guys have policies but you're not following the policies uh, th with this one um, it was past the due date for the application it was made june 19th formal application was made 25th it missed the deadline i'm just bringing that forward any other comments on that the deadline and, and i also looked at that and I'm thinking why have we got a deadline on a on a, on a grant or a, an incentive why what is the deadline is it 30 days after they receive a tax notice or is it six months after they receive a tax notice? why why is it so what's the constraint on this that all of a sudden they can't you can't do it six months later Councillor Empter? I believe that the uh, application has to be done before the tax payment is received. So once, it, they could apply at any time, but it's for the following year's tax. So when the tax is going to be due in July, he's got to apply two weeks prior. And that's uh, basically what I'm looking at here. So the deadline is June 15th because we're expected to pay our tax by July 1st. So he's got to apply before, or the assessments come out at that time and they're due July 31st actually so he's got to apply beforehand he can still apply the next year for the following years because we only tax once a year right six months in July 1st so at any time prior so well I'm, I'm probably not understanding this correctly but are you saying then that he gets the tax bill and he pays the tax bill he pays the full amount and then he can apply for a rebate of the portion that it that is the improvement, which is the house. Uh, I'm not sure of the process. Uh, or Herb or Kelly. Do you want to throw some light on this for us, um, please? I don't think there is any good reason for the two week window that's open. There's no reason that it couldn't be 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever amount the council chooses should be a reasonable period of time. Uh, I think maybe at the time it was set up for two weeks, anticipating that the person would get the grant before the taxes were paid. I can't quite remember what the reasoning was. But if council wishes to change it, I think they should. I, think, I don't think the two week window is sufficient. And this is what happens. So I agree with what you're saying that we are supposed to follow our policies, but being as this was the first time that we actually implemented, I can see where this was not a good, a, um, it, it didn't come out the way we wanted it to, mostly because of the date. The incentive worked, he built the house, we we're, were satisfied with the rebate, but the date is not a good time. So taking into account what you said, I agree. But I also think that we have to amend that date. That, and I think six months, probably bring it back and, uh, and give them a, a longer window. I'm in complete agreement. You've got to remember, that's building season. And what does he do? He builds. Exactly. You think he's going to stop and, I mean, it is $600. Exactly. Do I build my house or, or if it's, you know? He's waiting for a rainy day. Didn't happen. We had lots of sunshine this summer. Okay. All right. So we probably want two motions. One that is the motion that Mr. Councillor Anter has made. The other motion is to bring this back with with a 
rewritten rewritten date time frame mm -hmm. okay okay could you read then the motion back please if there's no other is no there any other discussion it says it says it says right there so it's the recommended action yep. that's your motion yep. all in favor it's carried councillor Danaka did you want to make I'm not sure what I'm what I'm trying to word change the tax and development incentive policy um, date to, for, to to bring in, to request administration to bring back policy uh, property tax development incentive policy uh, with a new proposed deadline further extending. I'll go with what Quentin said. Thank you. Yes. Uh, my suggestion would be to make the deadline a certain number of days from the date of issuance of the tax notice. Make it 30, 60, 90 days, whatever you choose from the issuance of the tax notice. 90 days. It gives him a big window. Months? It gives him a big window. 90 days. Three months? From all, yeah, because then he's July, August, you, end of September. Yeah. All right. So bring it back. There you are with a 90 day window. Okay, all in favor? Carried. Next item is the request for tax penalty reversal. Councillor Emter. Uh, make a motion that council receive the CIBC letter dated July 23rd, 2014, regarding council consideration to waive tax penalties on eight properties for information. Is there a comment on this one? Questions on this one? Councillor Danaka. <coughs> um, in reading the letter, um, both parties were, were at fault. Um, I'm just I called your office and I was informed the 2014 property taxes would be due the end of July as per my records. Um, on, uh, upon receipt, I glanced at the top and as I was informed by your office, taxes were going to be due the same as last year. Unfortunately, <coughs> a miscommunication from our office to them she didn't read it right. I, I think we should still um, waive the penalties. Okay. Councillor Long? Unfortunately, there's residents that are going to be impacted by this, but I would ask CIBC if we were late because we misread the date on a letter, if they would waive a penalty for us. And I can tell you unequivocally, it'd be no. They would say pay up, regardless, any bank. But now we have to look at what kind of an impact are we having on the ratepayers. So. Would this Councilor go Panasic? Would this go back on the ratepayers, or would this go? This would be eaten up by the CIBC and their maybe cut into their. Fourteen billion dollar profit. Yeah. Approximately two billion Counselor. per year. <laughs> that, that, that was my comment. That actually, it, it is a clerical error from CIBC. It has nothing to do with the property owners. They make their payment every month. CIBC made a clerical error. It happened. Um, it's a twenty-seven hundred dollar bill, and, and they're going to come out uh, tomorrow, actually, with their new quarterly update. And it's expected this year about two billion dollars profit. Uh, they had 570 some million dollars first quarter in, in Canadian Bank. They're okay. You can't make your decision based on how much they're making. Well, I did. You know Sorry. that. You have to make the decision based on whether or not you are willing to waive this because she made a clerical error. And that was a good point. So. Madam Mayor, I just might add. A bit of clarification. Nobody in the office um, has confirmed her allegation or her assertion that somebody at the office told her that they do at the end of July. However, just looking at when she called, April 29th, the tax bylaw, um, I'm not sure, I don't think it even passed in April, I think it was in May that it got passed. So if she did, let's assume she did call, and one of our people in the office did say, well, you know, they probably said something last year, they were due at the end of July. I doubt very much they would have said, that they wouldn't have known the due date because the bylaw wasn't passed. So rather than think of being a miscommunication, um, 
maybe perhaps look at it that uh, yeah, it, it, it might have been not, not miscommunication, but it might have been maybe our best estimate based on what happened last year. Ultimately, the taxpayer is responsible for looking at that box that says due date mm -hmm. on your tax notice. And um, if you did pass this, just think of the number of people that you could get, you know, theoretically coming forward saying, hey, I didn't notice the due date on the tax notice. Then you'd be in a real buy. So it's, it's a tough one, I know, but on the other hand, uh, actually, I look at what. Mr. Ziedel, I don't think it's tough at all. The fact of the matter is, you get a bill, it's got a due date. It doesn't really matter what people tell you, it's got the due date on it. So I think that is the decision you have to make. Are we upholding our due dates or aren't we? So we have a motion to receive for information. Is there any other comment on it? All in favor? It's carried. Next item is the Peace Library Systems. Councillor Amter. Make a motion to Council forward that PLS request to increase municipal fees by 5% per year between 2016 and 2018 to the 2015 budget deliberations. Is there a discussion on this item? I just have a question. What would be the, the net increase for us? And any ideas? Like, is it. Like I'm figuring it's about eight hundred and forty dollars or somewhere in there if we add the twenty eight cents per capita increase. So it's somewhere around I did a rough calculation taking it as a population of I think twenty six hundred or something because I think it went from fourteen to sixteen plus or from uh, twenty fifteen to twenty eighteen or something in there. And, and I guess the other question, I'm just wondering, if being on the library board, you might know, is why don't the libraries get together with the public schools and the colleges and, and make one library system for a small town like this as opposed to having many? Is there any even thoughts to that? Um, unfortunately, I don't have an answer. I know that the Peace Country Library System is trying to work with the reserves to try and get them access so they will come and use the library and um, that type of system but there it's um, unfortunately there it's not being very receptive at the moment um, as um, in answer to your question I, I don't know Brian I, I honestly don't know and the other thing that just got me with this one is what if we approve this and there's all of these other municipalities and the other muni municipalities don't agree to the increase and then we end up paying and they don't pay so we're, f we're you know helping to fund all of the other communities in essence. Let's discuss this after Councilor, our budgets. Yeah. But okay. we can do that. Councillor Danaka, one last comment. Um, just in their the body of their letter it says they're asking us to send a letter of support by September the 30th of this year if we're supporting the, the upgrade to the master agreement hmm. so so we wouldn't be able to move it to the so budget. you need another motion yes okay so we have one motion that puts this uh, that puts this forward to the 2015 budget deliberations all in favor I didn't see yours. Yes, carried. And do we have another motion then for the support, Councillor Denaka? Um, I make a motion that uh, Council sends a uh, letter of uh, in support of the master agreement to the Peace Country Library System for the suggested increases per capita prior to September thirtieth, twenty fourteen. Councillor, um, if, if we send a letter of support, are we not saying that we're going to uh, pay the increased fee? Is that? I would take it if we are sending a letter of support, we're agreeing to we're, the we're, increase. Yes, we're, we're indicating we're in support of it when we haven't even debated it, and I'm actually against. Actually, it. as a, as I'm reading this now, it says 
Upon receipt from the minimum 26 members, the amended agreement and new fees will be officially approved on behalf of the membership. So if we send it a letter saying we approve it, yeah. we're part of that, so skip that. We'll just take it to the budget. She withdraws her motion, I assume. Do you withdraw your motion? I withdraw that motion. Thank okay. you. Um, just as a matter, and I could be wrong on my decimals, but it's a 25 cent raise per capita. There's about 2,500 people in uh, High Prairie, so 25 cents is $625. But the users can pay that. Thanks. Okay, okay. Uh, the next item then is the Alberta Lake Management Society. Councillor Emter. Make a motion to council receive the Alberta Lake Management Society request for sponsorship of their 21st annual workshop being held at the Slave Lake Inning Conference Centre for information. Comments? Now you're the um, representative on... Um, I am on the Watershed Council and they are, I guess, helping to coordinate and organize this particular conference and they are looking for any sponsors along with anything else so that's that's why they are sending it and know that we've supported the watershed council and they're looking for their conference to be and this year it is in slave lake as opposed to in calgary or lethbridge or one of those other communities so um, it is close to home this particular year any other comments? And they're asking for $500. Do we have $500 in our promotional budget? We do. We do? We do have $500 in our sponsorship budget. Uh, watershed is, is part of our um, municipal concern. There's yes, some, Mr. Tamaki? There's something very interesting here. Donate a travel bursary for a student, young professional, 250. What two, page? Uh, uh, there's the next. It's on page 35. Page 35. Right at the bottom. Donate a travel bursary for a student, young professional. So you could identify your sponsorship dollar. Is the motion for information? The motion yes, it is. The motion is for information. All right then. The is only way to save money is stop spending. Is there any other uh, comments or anything like that? All in favor of the motion. And opposed? So the motion is defeated. Does anyone make another motion? I would make Kanasa? a motion that we uh, sponsor the. Uh, ALMS Society for the amount of $500. Did you want to specify 250 goes to a student or let them? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure about what that is for or anything else. So. 500 is for coffee, coffee sponsor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether you want to be attached to that. <laughs> Well, if it's Tim Horton's coffee, that's okay. No, but I don't know which one it is. But I mean, we—I I don't want to support the gold, silver, bronze. But that's uh, so. Yeah, maybe the 250. I'd be all right with that too. Councillor Long. I was going to say, if you were looking at the 500, we could split it up to make two 250 anniversaries and allow two people to go. Two students. Yeah. yeah. Designate it then. Okay, uh, I make my motion to for five hundred dollars, which is two two hundred and fifty dollar uh, bursaries for the student and young professionals. So you'll beat the bushes and try to get somebody from High Prairie. Yes. Two from High yeah. Prairie. Two from High Prairie. I don't even uh, like. I say I'm not sure what that is for. I would imagine it's a university student in the program of studies. Good. Tell them it's from Northern Alberta students. Councillor Emter? Um, I was wondering if our uh, treasurer or, or Mr. Tamaklu could let us know how much money uh, we spend on the watershed um, through sponsorship, development, um, committee attendance, uh, programs, 
et cetera, to date or for the end of the year? Just rough ballpark. I can probably do that because we sponsored them for five thousand okay. dollars, and the other thing would be uh, my costs to attend the meetings. So they meet once a month, and it would be twelve hundred bucks. Yeah. So over a year, and Do they didn't meet over the summer. So I think there's ten meetings a year. It gives you thousand dollars. Gives you an idea. <laughs> Any other questions? Comments? Nothing. Councillor Amter. And as I was indicating with one of my comments, was I shouldn't have said until I raised my hand. The only way we're going to save money is by not spending it. Um, I know it's only five hundred dollars. But every little program we do at $500 keeps adding up. We've had uh, public delegations two meetings in a row talking about taxes, talking about cost. They're only going to re re lower that is by controlling what we're doing. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be in favor of this. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right then, Councillor Panasic. No, no, I was going to comment to that, but that's nope. okay. Okay, so. We're sending uh, two sponsor two. We're sponsoring two students to go to this. Hopefully, from Northern Alberta. All in favor? Opposed? And the motion is carried. Uh, Volunteer-driven, not-for-profit capital projects policy. This is sent back and has now been come back again with a rewriting. Yes. Can I have a mo uh, motion on this, please? Councillor Panasic. Council approved the capital project policy number 68-2014. And comments? Councillor Danaka? Um, <clears throat> personally, to me, the policy, the first paragraph and the second paragraph, uh, I find the first paragraph very repetitive. Uh, my suggestion is to delete that whole paragraph and just go with the second one. Comments? Councillor Amter? No. Councillor Panasic? No. Councillor Long? Uh, no. I, I, I see what you're saying. Uh, Councillor Panak is saying. No, I'm good. Okay. So the motion is? The motion was to accept it as is. As is. How come I don't have that? Oh, capital project policy 68. Okay. Um, I actually agree. And uh, I think the rest of you must have agreed too because nobody said anything. So, all in favor of accepting as is. And we have one. Opposed? And it is uh, carried as is. No. no, no, you've no, just okay. defeated it. Yeah, we defeated it as the yeah. okay. Yeah, it's, it, the motion is defeated. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, as is, we didn't do that. Mm -hmm. All right, next one. Do you want to make a motion? Um, I make a motion that uh, administration <coughs> uh, come back with the rewrite of uh, policy number 68 2014 with the uh, removal of the first paragraph and only the second paragraph in the policy. Can, can we make a motion that we accept it with an amendment? Can you do that? Yes. Mm -hmm. then Wouldn't that, can okay. we accept so it that with So that it amendment? doesn't have to come back again and okay. waste everybody's time one okay. more time. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. changing my motion for the amendment. Okay. That, that would work. Do you have that? Can you read it, please? Moved by Councillor Kanasik that Council approve the volunteer driven not for profit capital project policy number 68 2014 as amended to remove the first paragraph. All in favor? That's carried. Next item is the Hyperion District Museum and Historical Society. <laughs> Motion, please. Councillor Amter. <clears throat> I'd like to make a two-part motion. 
The council approve a donation in the amount of $500 made payable to the Hyperion District Museum and Historical Society be taken from council's advertising and promotions. Account number 21-1221 for the Alberta Cultural Days being held on September 26th to the 28th, 2014. And rescind the previous motion of $500 donation to the Slave Lake Water Attendance. I'd rather spend the money on town. Oh. <laughs> I don't think you can rescind a motion in the same as, a, as an approval of motion. Can you, Mr. Tomaclo? I made a two-part motion. It's a two-part motion. So, so we're, we're going to vote on You can vote on the, on first, the first one, and then you can vote on the second. So it's like two motions. Just, there are. Two motions. Two motions. Yeah. All right. First one is to mm. give the um, Hyperion <laughs> District Museum Historical Society $500. You bet. Any comments on that? For Alberta Culture Days. Um, that. <clears throat> I just want to say that um, there is value in this. Um, I had Darlene put together some numbers for me. In 2011, they had 181 people plus 60 artists take part in the show or in the, the Culture Days. Last year, they had uh, 302 plus 81 art show entries so it is progressively getting bigger and bigger and I think it's a worthy cause to support I'm gonna go around Councillor Amter. Yep. Councillor Long? Um, I think it's it's worthy of $500 I think that um, if the discussion goes around with the uh, joint use agreement um, and if we end up getting the ice surfaces and the facilities put into the town, uh, we'll be able to save a lot of money by shutting down one of the ice surfaces. And I, I sure hope that that uh, council Hunter would see the value in that. But for 500 bucks, I think it's a dollar well spent, uh, especially the watershed. It's vitally important to this area. Nope, we're talking so about I the museum. I'm just going back to that. Oh, okay. So. So yes, I'm in favor of it. Okay, Councillor Panassa. I think it's a it's a good cause, and it's one of those things that brings some activity, action into the town. And we talk about keeping a vibrant town. This is one of those things that makes it vibrant when you have these kinds of activities. I'm in favor of it. Councillor Emter. I'm extremely in favor of bringing activity and growth to the town. It's five hundred dollars. Um, I much prefer to spend my 500 in town and, and the activities that occur here versus giving it to another town that has got the growth and development going on already. Um, my comment would be this is a three-year uh, activity. I can't uh, for the life of me figure out why we didn't get this as a grant application when yeah. they were advertised for it. They knew it was coming and yet we didn't get the application. I'm disappointed. Perhaps this is an educational component to let people know ahead of time so perhaps you can take that back I'm in favor of this but I'm disappointed that we didn't get this as part of the grants that we are supposed to be looking at in the 2015 budget um, and I do know that they have received they applied for five thousand dollars from Alberta culture they only got 3500 of it, but normally they don't even get 3500 do they? I think the last year they got it, they had, I think they got the full amount if what, for my, what I remember Darlene saying, the last, or 2011 when they did it, and they applied again for the same amount, but they only got 32 35 or 35 It's in the budget. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, that's my comments and so. All in favor then, do you want the motion read back? No. It's the first part of the first one. Okay. All in favor? Now the next part of the motion. The next part of the motion was rescinding the motion. Um, I don't know the motion number because okay. we don't have it yet. It's the ALMS and LSWC uh, $500 donation. Can you do that? We can. Mm -hmm. You can do that in the same meeting and a motion is passed and then rescind the motion. Rescind the motion so immediately. It's just to cancel the decision of council. It's just I want to Proposed. move the money rather than spend it. I know. It's That's just it. awkward, but it's done. 
You could spend your whole council meeting going back yeah, and forth, exactly. mm -hmm. making motions and rescinding them. Yeah. So, are you sure that I'm very sure. there isn't a timeline that you cannot I'm very do it sure until can the next? Rescind, council can rescind the decision anytime. All I'm giving is three people an opportunity to <laughs> move that money elsewhere. Or find some people. All right. I pray that we so, can go. So, read the motion back, please. Moved by Council Ranker that Council rescind motion number 557-14. Moved by Council Pronostic that Council donate to the Alberta Light Management Society in the amount of $500 to be split into two $250 travel bursaries for a student and young professional to be taken from the 2014 operating budget. Did you get that, Councilor Tanaka? Yes. Do you want to paraphrase it? No. Okay. So basically, I don't want to put the 500 over in Slave Lake. I want to put the 500. Okay. Okay. We've I already approved wondered, okay. the high priority. Yeah. Yeah. Now okay. I want to take the 500 back. Okay. okay. All set. All in favor of Councillor Emter's motion? Nobody changed their mind. And opposed. So the motion is defeated. Next item of business is the electronic sign board. Motion. I make a yes, Councillor. I make a motion that Council approve policy 47B-2014 uh, electronic sign board. Comments. Councillor Danaka. Um, my, my concern is 4.3a all requests will be approved or rejected by the chief administration officer or designate for the town prior to any messages being placed my concern is that the uh, CAO has um, his criteria his designate may have another criteria there's no defined criteria what leads to a rejection Mr. Tomato you want to speak to that yeah the policy speaks for itself it's a policy, so I should interpret the policy the same way as the designate should interpret the policy. I I, I still have some concerns with that. In that, you're, you, everybody has their own idea. I guess what what would qualify. Uh, unless you have something that says if you, if you make that decision and you go away and you appoint somebody else and you tell them well these are the criteria that this this these people are rejected then why can't that be in the policy okay, there's a, a simple approach to this is in the past that decision was made either by the chief administrative officer or the treasurer and we find it very awkward most of the work is done by the legislative secretary who is the designate so why have the treasurer make that decision? That's why we're taking out the treasurer and replacing that with a legislative secretary. I, I understand Councilor what you're Tenasek. saying I, in your, your concerns, but I think there, there's only a couple of scenarios where it wouldn't be approved. And, and the one of them which was added, which was the concerns that came from you know some of the people in the town was not advertising the the names of businesses of for-profit businesses because they're gaining marketing that they haven't paid for and you know that was their concern so we've taken that out and otherwise if it's submitted on the form and it meets those other requirements it's going to be approved it's okay. it's a public service so okay so, Councillor Zanaka? Yep, I, I understand. Um, my apologies, I was speed reading again. All right, so, so what they're saying is that all applications from any nonprofit or charitable organization will be accepted. Is that what you're saying? From nonprofit organizations will be accepted, yes. Char char and charitable organizations. The so, it doesn't really matter what, they, the, what, what they're advertising, it's going to be accepted. Well, obviously, within the sense of decorum, you know that if somebody wants to. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say that. Well, that's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, that's what Councillor Danak is, is discussing. She said, What criteria are you using? And is your criteria different than your designates? Yeah, I don't think so. 
Is that? The, yes, that was my question. Is your criteria different than whoever, whomever you designate? So what criteria are we using? Right now we're saying we'll advertise anything if it's from a nonprofit or a charitable organization. If that's what we want, we can go ahead with it. Okay, let me turn to Chris. Krista, what is the practice, maybe, what we do with the Usually a nonprofit or charitable organization is not if there's if there's swear words or something, then that's not going to make the cut. Um, if there if it's a profitable organization, they're going to be rejected. Um, I don't know what else to say. We we haven't really had any problems with that area in terms of what goes on the board, because I think everybody's reasonable about what they want to advertise. What has been the problem is the fact that we use maybe a business, and therefore the business then is being advertised. So the purpose for which this policy was coming forward is to have an address so that there is that neutrality instead of complaints about advertising businesses. And I do know that the one issue is that you give an address and in our town people don't know addresses and I, I know we mentioned this last meeting but I, I, I know that does anybody know the address of the IGA because that's probably the most common one where there's something happening at IGA or at home hardware. I have no idea what that address is but I know how to get there and find it. It means something to me. Five zero zero one fifty seven then. I think you're in the minority. <laughs> that actually. Yeah, no, she's addresses. looking at the map. <laughs> oh, on the okay. table. She she didn't know it. All right. Um, so, what they're saying, Councillor Danak, is at this point, unless it comes up as a problem, we're not going to look for problems. Okay. So, so we'll see how it flies. So, I think, uh, could you read the motion back, please? Pardon me. Moved by Council of the National Council approved policy number 47, 2014, electronic sign. All in favor? 